Examples that you can bring with yourself in terms of what we've done and what we're doing uh, at the Leg Group, uh, and we've had quite a journey in the last few years. I'm not going to bore you with company data, but I still need to just introduce you to what the Leg Group is all about because not everybody knows about that. So, founded in '32 by Uli Kikis Dansen, it's still a 100% fully owned family company by the Kikis Dansen family. Uh, the name is from 34. It actually is play well if you translate the late got uh, into Lego. So it's two letters of the first two words, a combination of Lego. It's a one brand company, so it's not to exemplify Procter & Gamble, which has many, many uh, brands. Uh, we have Lego City, Lego Star Wars, Lego something else. So it's everything falls under the Lego name. Uh, 11,000 employees, roughly, uh, and rising rapidly, uh, about 3 billion euro in turnover in 12 months. I think the most staggering figure is actually the the year-on-year -year growth, which is about 25 to 20 percent the, the last few years. So we've had uh, quite the journey, uh, but we also come from a tough place. Uh, we really, what I call the lost at sea when we try to do everything at the same time. So it's a classic story of uh, trying to do a lot of things which you're not good at, basically. And uh, since then we've uh, found our way back to really working with just construction toys. <laughs> not only toys, really taking it down to construction toys, and that's our key. So between 95 and 2003, we were basically just plunging into the abyss and very, very close to bankruptcy uh, at this stage. But uh, uh, the rest is history, and uh, that's a whole different presentation, so I'm not going to bore you with that, but uh, now we're back. Um, and part of how we managed to actually get back on track is, uh, is with real uh, authenticity and humility, asking every individual out there, uh, not only organizations and big uh, uh, customers, but really the, the sole Lego consumer, about what they think about Lego, what you know, what do they really love, what do they really hate, where did we go wrong? So this is a kind of an old classic um, uh, cover from the tech magazine Wired, the Lego Army wants you, um, and this is just to show that we threw ourselves out there and we asked, okay, so what can we do different to really get back on track? Um, and this relates very much to the huge fan community we have there of adult friends of Lego, it's an uh, abbreviation A4. Uh, which have been instrumentally kind of saying, you know, Lego, come on, this is what you should do. And uh, we actually did listen a lot to them and they helped us get back and forth. I put business secrecy stress relief, which is just a made up term of showing that I think a lot of organizations should really kind of tear down their barriers of uh, secrecy and really let the individual consumer come in there and help you develop the product. So that's hinting a little bit where I'm coming to in terms of what we're actually doing. Yes, so what exactly have LEGO worked on to be head of the game and, and uh, make sure that everybody's involved in coming out with the right products? The consumer for us is key, uh, and not the customer so much. That has more developed over time. Before we just thought it was a kind of a middle way to the consumer. 
Um, we really want to make sure that we facilitate for the consumer. Uh, we don't control. So uh, I'm sure some of you are familiar with the term open innovation. So something we discussed with uh, uh, Richard also that it kind of fits well into the theme of childhood. That we want to invite uh, every adult to kids to actually develop our products for us. That would simplify a lot for us and we'd also get great ideas. Um, this is a project called Lego Fuso. Um, maybe the URL is a little bit small to see there, but it's, uh, um, it's been active a couple of years. Uh, and step by step, to simplify, what it is is that any consumer that has an idea, anybody in here that has an idea, this is something I really want to see as a physical Lego box. You can go in there, you make your pitch, uh, you describe it, maybe you, you know, throw in a little bit of a design into it. And uh, if you can then gear up uh, 10,000 votes, the Lego group will step in and say congratulations, we'll take it from here and actually commercialize the product for you. Uh, so here you can see that modular Apple Store is a project that has 9,197 votes, a project that might then go into commercialization. Uh, but I think the most interesting thing to this, which I think LEGO is probably in a place a little bit further than others, is that we need to incentivize you also in order to make sure that the quality is high of these pitches. So 1% of all the net sales from these 10,000 products in the beginning will go to you. So it's really incentivizing and making sure that we really close the circle in terms of uh, making sure that we get a good product out of that. We see a bird there, Lego bird project, congratulations. So somebody who made that design is, uh, is very happy right now. Uh, one of the, let's say, local uh, um, examples that I have is also uh, uh, Minecraft, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with. Mojang Studios. Uh, it's actually a digital product that a lot of these players wanted to see as a physical product, so they got 10,000 votes within a few hours. Uh, uh, so um, that's also, I'm sure you've seen the, some of the boxes out there. So that's one example of really letting the consumer come with the ideas and incentivize them. Another example is, um, is what relates to what I mentioned before, the a community. So the a community is the adult friends of LEGO, our age, uh, on average, um, somewhere between 35 and 50, basically people, we have about 2 million people across the world spending all their free time uh, building. Um, there's a lot of scattered uh, organizations out there and they do conventions and some are more organized than others. So when talking to them, uh, the leg group found out, ah, what can we do to really facilitate that you're more in connection with each other globally, on a global level? Is that, uh, it's also a couple of years, one and a half, two years old, it's called Rebrick. So if you have a fantastic thing that you built that you really want to share with the world, you can register here and just share it and, you know, the same as for anything else, people can comment, people can share. Um, and when we talked to the community, it was very much like, yes, you can help us provide with the platform, but then get out. Uh, we really want to make sure that they are free to do whatever they want on this platform. But what we can do as an organization is, of course, just go in there and kind of take a little bit of a, a check on what are the current trends, what, what is happening out there. It's, uh, it's KitchenAid. Is that one example? Uh, is that something that we should pursue? Uh, household appliances? Or is it just continuing on the road of working with cars or something else? So for us, of course, it's interesting to go in and see, hmm, wait a minute, there's actually the same things are discussed in Brazil as they are in Stockholm. So uh, a fantastic way for them and also for us to, to, to share a great uh, experience. So that's a little bit about uh, taking inspiration and building product from, uh, from the consumers. About inspiring the consumers that we have. Uh, content has become the absolute most important part of our marketing mix. We've grown from uh, taking up a couple of minutes of very kind of low quality animated films, spreading it virally to actually now in a month's time uh, going out with a cinema feature film called The Lego Movie. Um, and it's really 
very, very important because if you open up a Lego box, a lot of bricks, a lot of bags, nothing is moving. So we need to kind of inject life into those bricks. Um, and we do that through lots of uh, content, uh, moving images, and just constantly heightening the quality of this. So, um, Ninjago, to take an example, these films and this series has become very, very popular and some of the most popular kids shows globally right now. And it's completely um, uh, and fully made out of film in Denmark. Affiliation is basically taking a partnership and elevating it to another level, which is another forum which you might not exist within. This is an example from the US. Google uh, is running it with it. Uh, Sam, as you might be familiar with, with a huge uh, project in Geneva, technical project ourselves at Lady Group, uh, National Geographic and Scientific American, are sponsoring and supporting. Uh, uh, basically, young talent in terms of physics and and other uh, and other um, uh, subjects. It's a huge competition where you know, Obama is going to give out a prize, and uh, a lot of things, of course, is about challenging people to build things in Lego. Uh, so this is elevating the partnerships, and I'm sure that all of us can think of forms that we might want to be in that we just haven't pursued because they're just a little bit out there. But I think it's. Uh, the other end is thinking the same thing, so we, we can all meet there in the middle. Another example which I also saw was part of the uh, kind of small introductory paragraph about myself was uh, um, a collaboration that we did as the only commercial company ever, together with NASA in the US. Uh, naturally, there was a past a few years since we went to the moon, uh, so uh, how do we get the kids to actually, you know, uh, respark the interest of space and learning and everything that surrounds that and uh, Lego being the place they are today of course has a lot of influence in trying to get lots of people interested in building technology uh, uh, and so forth. So this is again uh, together with NASA a huge affiliation um, uh, just to make a, a local example. This is a global example from the US, but locally we also, we also try to run with this. For example, in Sweden, we then sent out a Lego minifigure with a, uh, on a weather balloon in the space station in Kiruna, just to make sure that we filmed that, and so we did that all through the, all through the world. So there's a lot of interesting things that you can do like that. In terms of actual products, um, I'm sure many of you have questions and wondering how can you survive with this physical brick in this digital world? Uh, are you, is it really working? Uh, and it is. Uh, but just to give you a hint that we are also not completely behind in terms of digital thinking, we do have a product called the Life of George. Very, very small product, basically non-existent in terms of our global portfolio, but it's the concept is something that we're probably going to see that's going to scale up. So what it is, uh, you can buy it today, it's been available for more than a year. Uh, it's called Life of George, uh, targeted maybe slightly higher than our normal target market. It's a box with physical uh, Lego bricks inside, but you download an app uh, on your smartphone, uh, and then you will get challenged to build small, small things. Just take a photo of it, and it will, um, it will detect if you built it correctly. And, uh, and that's how fast you actually build it. And of course, you can like, compete with the global audience or um, with your friends. So, uh, something that's becoming very, very popular, uh, and I'm sure that we're going to see much more and more of it. But still, we're in a very much in the infancy of these kind of products. But it's showing uh, where we are. So, uh, I hope you're uh, keeping up with me here, but just to summarize a little bit before I open the floor for questions. It's a quote from a colleague of mine about this taking inspiration and actually having the consumers help you develop your products. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious, but not a lot of organization thinks like this. I think that 99.999 whatever percent of the most talented people in fact don't work for the leg group, for your company, anywhere you realize the huge potential in cooperating with people outside the company. 
So, it's about breaking down those barriers and really letting people come in and, uh, and not being so secretive about the uh, product offering. Rich content. Uh, I am very much certain that, especially the people in this room, knows a lot about content marketing and, and how important it is and, and it's just going to, going to grow. Um, involvement of your consumers in the development of your products and services. I think this is key in, into, uh, into really building a, a top product, a top portfolio. Didn't mention so much about this before, but I think this is very important. We're quite a large organization, but of course there are a lot of bigger companies out there. But dare to listen to one conflict. <laughs> Not only when there's a thousand. I come from other, also much bigger companies where there's basically say, ah, unless 10,000 10, people are complaining about that, we're not even moving from our desk. Um, but uh, we actually do move when there's one complaint. Uh, we actually take that into serious consideration. One parent, one consumer, it does not end up in a mailbox somewhere and disappearing. It's actually really taken into consideration. If there is one complaint, there is already a thousand somewhere else, for sure. And lastly, be a facilitator of the ideas. Uh, so lose the control a little bit. And um, it's a little bit scary. I've been talking to some very, very large uh, Swedish companies about this. And it's, when you say no one is big enough, it's kind of scary, but it is true. No one is big enough as a single organization to be head of the curve. You really need the, the outside help. Because a lot of people are learning a lot uh, what the global internet community can, can give you. <laughs> on that note, uh, thank you very much. And I really hope that there are some questions, either on what I quickly presented here now or, um, or anything else on, uh, on LEGO whilst I'm here. Thank you.